Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is my pump teeny sized mini recap of Vanderpump Rules season 10 episode 17, The Reunion Part 2. You guys, this reunion is everything I had hoped it would be in terms of entertainment. Could this have been a four-parter? Possibly because it's one of the strongest part twos I've ever seen. I always feel like part one, they throw in a couple of exciting things because they want to draw you in, but part three is what they save all the really good juicy stuff for. And then part two is kind of like a filler so that they can make more money and have this three parts. There have been a few excellent part twos. I think Beverly Hills, or was it New York? One of them had just a, an amazing reunion. All parts of it were great. And I really think that's going to happen again this time. I will tell you this. I was a little worried because I heard somewhere, maybe it was Lala, somebody on a podcast said that they only filmed for five hours, which seemed very short to me. I feel like for our Housewives reunions, it's like a 12-hour day. So the fact that they were only filming for five hours made me worry that there somehow wasn't much to talk about. I don't know, whatever. Part two, chock full of good stuff. So let's get started. We pick up mid-sentence practically from part one with Lala going hard on the attack of Sandoval and Lisa chiming in with, Oh, Lala, sometimes I feel like you've been very aggressive. And Lala's like, you need to give it up. And Lisa goes, I need to give it up. And she and James are like, yeah, you're sticking up for Tom too much. And Sandoval's like, she's just being reasonable. Yeah, of course you think so. James goes, oh, reasonable. Oh, oh. And then he gets up and walks off for the second time. And that's what prompted me last week to say that I was worried that he was leaving the stage so often for bad reasons. I have said before that I feel like James acts like an addict and it makes me nervous. I am concerned for him because I really do like, I, I really do think James is funny. I don't think he's a particularly nice person, but I'm entertained by his snarky side. I hate to say it. I am. I think he's funny. <laughs> anyway, some of you guys in the comments agreed with me. Some of you did not. Some of you suggested he was vaping or doing something else. I just want to say I'm feeling like it might have been a little irresponsible of me to even throw the suggestion out there in the universe. As one of you pointed out, it's not like he took his mic off, you know, he's mic'd the whole time. So yeah, I just feel like he can't sit still for very long. This time the cameras are like following him backstage and a producer goes, is everything okay? And James goes, yeah, I'm fine. It's just every time I keep hearing Tom, I get angry and then I have to go pee. That's funny. I don't think anger has ever made me have to pee, but, uh, okay. On stage, Sandoval calls Lala a narcissist and she's like, uh-uh. I may have an ego the size of this building, but I am not a narcissist, you moron. Sandoval, you're a moron. Good comeback for a 40-year-old man. Then he says, you pulled out your IUD the second you found out Stasi was pregnant. I didn't even get that. Was he saying Lala wants to be pregnant because Stasi is? Why? She's not even on the show anymore. Anyway, now we discuss Lala and Randall. Uh, we learn that Ocean wasn't on camera because Randall sent a legal letter saying that pictures, videos, nothing of her could be on the show. Andy. There was an LA Times article accusing Randall of running a casting couch, having his assistants move drugs, and laid out millions of dollars worth of lawsuits. Randall denied all those allegations through his spokesperson. <laughs> Ariana's not buying it. Lala goes, who, by the way, is the same spokesperson that Harvey Weinstein used? So I think that's important to note. Lala says she met Randall while she was hostessing at Sir. And she said that he was a fan of the show. Lisa goes, I bet he's not now. <laughs> she was asked if she felt like she had to sleep with him to get a part. And she said, no, she didn't. She goes, you know, the funny thing is, like, I came from Utah and I didn't even really know that that's how Hollywood worked. James, I knew that since I was eight years old. Lisa, well, he slept with Kristen to get on a television show. <laughs> I love the idea of Kristen being the casting couch. 
And James goes, no, I created my own storyline and you should thank me. Sandoval's like, you told people that, James. We get a flashback to the reunion 2016 where James did, in fact, tell people. He's like, to be honest, I was getting on the show regardless because I was either going to move in with him or sleep with his ex-girlfriend. Yeah. So anyway, Lala says that she knows now. I guess there was a bunch of red flags and she's like, you know whatever, hindsight is twenty twenty, and now I realize that if something seems too good to be true, it is. And Andy goes, well, sobriety will do that to you. How long has it been now? And she said just shy of four and a half years. And everyone congratulates her for that. And then we break for lunch, and the cameras follow them backstage. Lala is talking to Katie, and she said, am I too out of pocket right now? Because I feel like every time he opens his mouth, I want to pounce. And Katie goes, no, but it's also like I want to get through through stuff. And Lala goes, yeah, I want to get through stuff too. Yeah, I do too. I would love for the others to be quiet when Sandoval is asked a question. I want to hear his answer. If he's struggling, let it sit. I just, I I want him to sit in the awkward silence until he answers. I feel like he gets away without answering a question because there's so much drama going on around him. You know, he, he gets interrupted and then we lose track and then he ends up never answering. I hate that. All right. So meanwhile, we see Schwartz is still on stage. Now he's doing some push-ups by himself. Sandoval has gone outside to join Raquel in her trailer. He's like, how you doing? And you look great. She's like, how's it going? And he goes, oh, it's rough out there. James has been exactly the way I knew he would be. If I blink, he's like, look at him blinking over there. <laughs> kind of true. Sheena's fully groveling at Katie's feet because she wants to get back in with the group. And Lala, who doesn't give a flying about either one of us, is calling me a narcissist. And they're making us out to be pathological liars. Raquel, I see that. Yeah. Even though we know that we're not, right? We haven't lied about anything except this affair. Yeah, sure. And also everything you needed to say to keep it hidden for the last seven months. Meanwhile, all the others are eating lunch together, except for Schwartz. I don't know what he's doing now. But, you know, it must be lonely being the only guy sticking up for Sandoval when Sandoval's off with his little girlfriend and now you can't sit at the cool kids lunch table. You're back to the wrong horse, Schwartz. That's what I'm saying. James is like, if they do end up together, ugh, good riddance. They can go live in a yurt somewhere in the desert. Yeah, and Ariana's like, yeah, and wait till their relationship changes once she becomes his girlfriend and she's not all so cool and... Anything goes. Cut back to Tom and Raquel. Raquel, I don't love the way it's coming across about your guys' intimacy. Clearly, I only know what you're telling me, but after watching what you guys taped so far, it looks like you guys had a solid relationship. Oh, sweet girl. Tom. Yeah, I mean, Ariana, you know, like she always used to talk down to me a little bit, but then she like started changing. It went from like, I don't know, like say I would ask her something like, what should I wear tonight? Or how does this look? Should I wear this? And she'd be like, no. To her saying, Tom, you're so good with fashion. You should just wear what you want. I was like, what? Oh, wow. She sounds like a real monster. Tom, you had been complaining about her being mean or dismissive or whatever, and she was making an effort. Raquel, I feel like she felt like you wanted to keep the relationship going because you didn't break up with her. And Sandoval goes, yeah, maybe I, maybe we should have done that sooner. Raquel. <laughs> you think? Yeah, so Raquel says that like her entire character is in question now. I've gone through a transitional phase this summer, and I feel like the pendulum swung too far in the other direction. Well, to use your phrase, you think? 
I know you felt like you were free as a bird since you broke up with James and, you know, you were finding yourself and you were, you know, free to sow your wild oats and all that, whatever, having your hot girl summer. I don't know. But you acted like you were free to do whatever and whoever you wanted, whether or not they were in a relationship. So Tom leaves the trailer now and there's a producer out there and he's like, can I get a break now? I don't want to be filmed anymore. Can you just go? I would like to have a chat with her in private. And the producer's like, well, no, because if you guys are together, that's the deal. You have to be filmed in mic. He goes, if you want to have lunch, can have lunch. It sounded to me like the deal was if you're alone, you can turn your mic off or whatever. I don't know, probably to go to the bathroom and stuff like that. But the minute two or more of you are together, it has to be filmed and mic'd. So he's like, the others are having lunch, but they're doing it on camera, which they are. Tom has like a, his little hissy fit. I don't want to be filmed. I need a break. She's uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. We have to watch what we say. Uh, okay. Well, either he wants to go make out with her or more likely he wants to coach her about what to say when she comes on stage. Either way, it's not going to happen. Okay, now we're back and we're joined by Allie. She says she met James when he was performing with Tom Sandoval in The Most Extras. She had seen Vanderpump Rules before during COVID. She kind of went down the Bravo rabbit hole, she said. And she was asked if anything she saw about James concerned her. And she said yes, but... I met him in person and gave him a chance and that James was very lovely. We discussed the awful thing that James said about Raquel's parents. It's the thing I I take such offense to, that her dad is miserable because he's married to that fat bitch. James goes, well, yeah, you know, obviously not a proud moment of mine. I regret it. Shouldn't have said it. Definitely take it back. And Allie's like, I didn't like that at all, James. But they've said some pretty nasty stuff to me at the dinner table. Then Sandoval whispers to Schwartz, he said the same thing to me about my mom in the first text I got from him. Anyway, James says, yeah, her mother would talk about my penis size every single Thanksgiving dinner. (laughs) Like, is he circumcised? Is he not? What are circumcised cocks like? Uh, What is happening? Okay, I mean, (laughs) okay. I mean, look, this is ridiculous hyperbole. It's kind of why I love James. But she can't possibly wonder if he's circumcised every Thanksgiving, right? I mean, unless she has amnesia, I think that's something you would only have to ask once. Lisa looks horrified, by the way. James. She would literally have these conversations with me. And I've got Grandma Button sitting across the table from me, for God's sake. (laughs) Grandma Buttons. So we see Raquel watching this. And in a Bravo first, she's not smiling. She's also not denying it, which I definitely would have if I was in that trailer. And he accused my mom of asking about his penis every Thanksgiving. I definitely would deny that. Allie is asked if she's worried about his drinking. She says she doesn't love it. But she also said that they've been drinking a lot less lately, both of them. And uh, she doesn't seem overly concerned about it. James says he will never go back to that out of control drinking that he was before. And Sandoval said, oh, really? He explains that he and Schwartz have an ongoing show in Atlantic City and that now James is a part of it. And the last time they were there, James was belligerently drunk without a shirt on. And the manager came up to Sandoval and said, he's going to get kicked out. I guess he also grabbed or slapped a waitress on the ass. And then they had to get her to sign something saying she wouldn't file a lawsuit. James's response to that, and the reason why I think it's true, is, well, you two get drunk all the time too. And he makes tenfold what Sandoval will ever make. So not really addressing the issue at all. Lala does say to the Toms, you two drink a lot. So I mean, you're not the ones that should be calling him out on his drinking. And Sandoval goes, it's not how much you drink, it's how you act with it. I don't smack girls on the ass, Ariana. No, you just fuck my friend. Sandoval goes, okay, irrelevant. That's not your get out of jail free card for everything, James. Yet yeah, is the card this year, you mustache prick. And James has just walked off the stage 
again. Still yelling though. You mustache worm bitch. James is really triggered by that mustache. I mean, I guess we all are a little bit. But. All right, so then we take a break, and when we get back from the break, Andy says, Allie, you told James he needed to see a therapist after beach day. Why? I love Allie's response. Well, I think everybody should see a therapist, especially men, especially James. <laughs> Anyway, he is seeing a therapist. It's going well. He does think the therapist is helping him with his anger issues. And Andy's like, well, I haven't really seen evidence of that today. And Ariana said, well, I think today is extenuating circumstances. And James is like, thank you, Ariana. We move on to Sheena. Uh, we talk about her being secretly married for a year and how Katie was mad at Schwartz for prioritizing Brock over her when he hasn't known Brock that long. So Andy asks Katie about that. And she goes, well, obviously he's known Sheena for a long time, but Brock, he just met the summer before. Schwartz, Katie has a history of diminishing my friendships. Katie, that you're friends with everyone. You're a serial killer's wet dream. You're going to get chopped up into pieces one day because you literally trust everyone. Schwartz is like, no, there's some people I don't trust. And Sheena goes, sitting next to you? And she wasn't talking about herself. I can promise you that. Andy asks Allie if she ever wanted to tell Raquel or Lala to stay out of her relationship with James. And Allie kind of looks at Lala and smiles. And Lala goes, you can say yes. She does laugh. And she goes, at the time, I think I was open to hearing what they had to say. But looking back, I feel like I could have been more protective of us, she says to James. Lala says it came from a place of her intense hurt, you know, just being in a raw place with Randall and and basically feeling like she wanted to protect all women. And she gets, you know, a little teary and Lisa goes, oh, Lala, you're getting emotional. And Lala's like, no, not going to do that. And she goes, no, I adore that side of you. James thinks that Lala is a superwoman for conquering a business and a child and dealing with such an asshole of an ex. However, James did not love her talking to Allie. He goes, I was like, come on, you know I'm not that guy. She already heard it all from Raquel. And we get a flashback to Raquel talking about that night at the Canyon Club, she was telling Charlie about it, that James and Allie got into a loud argument and they got kicked out that night. So James goes, oh, I was tired and sweaty and I wanted a shower. So I was yelling, I want to go home. And security came and said, you can't be shouting in here. So Allie said, we weren't fighting with each other. And Sandoval goes, well, I didn't see it. Allie, yeah, no one saw it. So I don't know how Raquel became the narrator of that night, but that's not what happened. Sandoval, well, a security guard said that you either grabbed her arm or her wrist for a second or whatever. And all I know is that was the second time in a row that you got kicked out after doing a like gig with me. Okay, so next Andy says, all right, I want to get into the fallout of the affair with Sandoval and Raquel in a little bit, and then we're going to bring Raquel out here on stage. Sheena, because of the temporary restraining order that Raquel has against you, you will have to leave before Raquel joins us. He asks her about that. Sheena says they have a court date on the 29th. Andy brings up Raquel's claim that that night after Watch What Happens Live, Sheena punched her. And Sheena said, I can't talk about that night at all. Andy, did you punch her? Sheena, I can't say anything. Andy, okay, does anyone else think that she punched her? Lisa suggests maybe she slapped her. Katie's like, she can't make a fist. Look at those fingernails. And Sheena's like, <laughs> Andy, Sandoval, what do you think? Long pause. Andy, Sandoval? You guys, when I tell you that a full 22 seconds passed before he said anything, I'm not lying. I timed it. He finally stutters out a, um, I wasn't there. Then there's like another deep sigh. Another eight seconds go by. And Lisa asks, why is it so difficult to answer? Sandoval. Because I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place. And Sheena goes, then just keep your mouth shut. That's probably better, Sandoval. Sandoval. 
Listen, I don't want to upset my relationship with Sheena, Ariana. You have no relationship with Sheena, you idiot! <laughs> yeah, Sandoval. But I want to tell the truth. And Sheena's like, oh, the truth, yeah. Also, dude, you just said you weren't there. But now suddenly you have the truth? So he starts by saying, when Sheena called Ariana, she was on speakerphone, on Raquel's phone, and eventually she hung up Raquel's phone. And Ariana goes, not eventually. Sheena said, I'm on Raquel's phone right now. I'm going to throw it and then call you from mine. You weren't on the phone for that part. You ran back to Tom. Tom. This was before the speakerphone. So then Sandoval's like, when we were in the car? And she said, yes. And she said, I pushed her. She never said I punched her. Sandoval, no, she said I punched that bitch in the face. Sandoval says he will take a polygraph to the fact that that is what he heard that night. I just punched that bitch in the face. Now Lala's like, I talked to Sheena that night and she didn't say one word about punching her. And I would watch your tongue. And Sandoval's like, I heard it. Also, I mean, you know, Lala, that's not much testimony. Okay, so you talked to Sheena later and Sheena didn't mention it. That doesn't really mean anything. You weren't there at the time either. Even less so, you didn't even hear her on speakerphone. So Sheena is like screaming now at Sandoval. I was on the phone with Ariana and she didn't hear me say that. And Sandoval goes, it was on speakerphone. Sheena goes, Sandoval, keep your mouth shut. Just stop. Um, Andy now gets into how close Sheena and Raquel were up until that night. He goes, you were on Watch What Happens Live together earlier that evening. And then he's, he asked her, do you think you two will ever be friends again? And without hesitation, she goes, never. Andy, Raquel and Sandoval said you knew something was going on between them. Is that true? Sheena, I was suspicious because of what Lala told me and what Katie said. But then I had lunch with Ariana and we discussed it. She absolutely didn't think there was any truth to it whatsoever and that neither of them would ever do that to her. Oof. Ariana. Yes, she came to me in a very respectful way, which I appreciated. And I know she didn't do it lightly because she cared about both of them as much as I did. Then we learn that at Coachella in April, this would be four months before the one night stand, after Ariana went to sleep, Sandoval and Raquel were in the hot tub and Sandoval said to Raquel, so like, you know, Ariana and I are in an open relationship. And started coming on to her. Now, this is according to an unnamed source who said that Raquel told them directly. Sandoval denies ever having said that they were in an open relationship. And Ariana said, oh, well, then maybe you might want to stop hanging out with a liar because that's what she's saying. And Sheena goes, yeah, there's a lot of things she said about you. And Sandoval goes, that's not true, dude. I just talked to her. Ariana, oh, I just talked to her. Why? So you could coach her on what to say when she comes out here? Just like you used to coach me, Sandoval. You used to coach me, Ariana. Let's be real. Ariana goes, yeah, well, you needed it. Okay, moving on. Andy, Sheena, I have something here for you from Raquel. And she gave it to me because she's not allowed to hand it to you in person. Then we see another little piece of Andy's one-on-one -on -one interview with Raquel. She said she completely regrets taking out the restraining order on Sheena and has been taking every measure to try and get it dropped. I guess her lawyer filed a letter to get the court hearing dismissed altogether. And she has the paperwork right there and she hands it to Andy and she said, this is for Sheena. So now on stage, Andy is handing that to Sheena. Sheena, you know, breaks down about how stressful it's been. She's like, first of all, it's a betrayal of two of my best friends. Side note, now ordinarily, I would make fun of how Sheena is kind of making this about herself when this really happened to Ariana. But you guys, I actually, I kind of get it. I'm at least empathetic to how it must shake somebody to be so wrong about two people that you've like entrusted into your inner circle. Being lied to and then feeling stupid for being duped and, you know, then the TRO and I kind of get the tears. 
Obviously, like, it doesn't involve her life partner the way it does for Ariana, but I would imagine you would feel off balance, at the very least with how wrong you could be in your judgment of of someone. And this is two people. And I'm not talking about falling in love. Okay, let's say they fell in love, they couldn't help it. I'm not saying like, oh, that's so heinous. I'm talking about the months and months of lies. All the times that they had to lie to the people closest to them to keep this covered up. That's what's shaking everybody's confidence and, you know, making them question themselves. Like, how did I not see this? It's insidious. So anyway, Sheena, you know, feels betrayed by the TRO. She says she did nothing wrong. And she took care of Raquel when she didn't have a place to live after she broke up with James. She took her in. Sheena's crying. She's like, I was like a sister to her. I did everything for her. I mean, tears are streaming down her face. We cut to Raquel. Nothing. Nothing. Dry eyes. At least she's not smiling. I'll give her that. <laughs> she, she could be laughing. Sheena goes on to say, I said to Raquel when I had a suspicion, I said, I know you would never do this. Never, ever. And she said, never. I said, don't you ever do something that's going to make me be apart from you. Ariana and I have been ride or die for you. I love you so much. Don't ever do anything to change that. And she said, I promise I wouldn't, Sheena. I would never do that. Ooh, okay. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. It's those kind of lies that make this whole thing a lot different than just your run-of-the-mill cheating on each other like everybody has done. And honestly, I don't understand people who can't see that this is worse. It just, I don't know. In my mind, this just feels so much worse. And he goes, you said you trusted your husband in bed with her. And Sheena goes, I did. Okay, Bravo is giving us a side-by-side with Sheena and Raquel now. Sheena in a mess of tears. Raquel, like I said, no real expression on her face. On stage, by the way, Ariana, Lala, Lisa, everyone is in tears. Tissues are being passed all around. Sandoval's like, I'm really sorry, Sheena. Schwartz is hugging Sheena. It's, yeah, it's emotional. Cut to Raquel in her trailer, and she's telling the producer, Now I feel like I should have written Sheena a personal note. And there's that million-dollar smile. As things are unfolding, like more realizations, and, um, like more regrets. She, what, are you asking if you should feel regretful? It's like she's wondering, is that the right emotion? I should have regrets, right? Uh, yeah. So Sandoval's like angry and he he's, you know, it's not like I've been lying the past 15 years. It wasn't done maliciously. Ariana, you watch what you f***ing say right now because it is malicious. And Sandoval goes, it is malicious. I'm saying I did not do it with malicious intent. Shana says she confronted Sandoval about it too. You know, like she said she had that lunch with Ariana, but she also confronted Sandoval about it. And he lied to her and she's like, yeah, thank God you lied to me. And Sandoval goes, yeah, I did because I didn't want you to carry that burden. And Shana goes, yeah, like you did to Schwartz. Only I don't think Shana would have carried it. I think he didn't tell Shana because he knows she wouldn't have kept his secret. Schwartz, on the other hand, I guess that was the right call for Sandoval. He got to get something off his chest and, you know, he got somebody who was willing to provide an alibi as well. That's part of it. It's not just that Schwartz didn't say anything. I understand bro code and all that, but he actively participated. When he said things like, yeah, we had a sleepover, when he wasn't really there or when he knows they were together, that's being an active participant. Kind of, yeah, this, this is all part of my losing respect for Schwartz. I mean, not that I ever really respected Schwartz, but I didn't dislike him. And now I just, uh, it's, it's, he's, he's a disappointment. All right, so Andy's like, okay, I hate to do this to you, Sheena, but it's time for you to exit the stage. And then when you're the appropriate distance away, we can bring Raquel on. So anyway, she's like, okay, but before I go, I ha- well, Sandoval has already gotten up on his feet because he's like, I got to get out of here. And then when she said, before I go, he like turned around. Oh, okay. 
And she goes, no, you can go. So he leaves. And um, it was really just that she wanted to say, Andy, 10 years ago when we did the second reunion, you joked about me having an album by 2023. And so she gets up and she goes over and apparently she has an album for Good as Gold by Sheena Shea. Um, So yeah, she's just showing them that. Oh my God, you guys. On this commercial break, we just saw like a little trailer for part three. Oh my God. Okay, it's just a tiny glimpse, but first we see Raquel and Sandoval backstage together. And Raquel says, it's hard to admit everything we've done. God. Okay. Then these words come on the screen. The shocking reunion finale. Then we see Andy asking Raquel if she ever encouraged Tom to break up with Ariana. We don't see the answer. We also see him ask Sandoval if they ever hooked up in their home. We don't get the answer yet. Then these words come on the screen. The last five minutes will change everything. (laughs) We see Sheena like bug-eyed watching from her trailer. Oh, God, I can't wait. Then it ends with us seeing Raquel in her confessional. This had to be during the season, or maybe it was a confessional after, like, that finale episode that took place after Scandival came out. She's wearing a different dress. I remember the dress from earlier, so this is, like, before the reunion. And the producer says to her, are you ready to tell the truth? Of course, we don't hear the answer, but it looks so good, you guys. I'm sure it's just hype, but I don't care. I love it. I am so impressed with how this season has been produced and edited. Hats off to all the -the behind-the-scenes people involved in the entire production of season 10 here. Just mwah. Chef's kiss. So good. Okay, now we're back. But just before we start, Andy says to Schwartz, you know you're moving over one seat, right? And when he starts to do it, Ariana goes, no, no, he's not. So he stays put. But it's funny because when the seating arrangement got leaked or not leaked, but like when they showed it as a teaser, that's when we first knew that there were two different seating charts and it was because of the restraining order and so anyway the one with Raquel in it they did have her sitting between the two toms yeah so if we saw it that means Ariana saw it as well and she probably thought "Mm, no I'm not gonna look across the room and see the two of them sitting next to each other all right now we get a little bit more of Raquel's one-on-one with Andy she says she's nervous but she knows that she has to be there to take accountability for my actions. Blink, blink. Andy asks her, what was the first spark of emotion between you? Like, when? how did that start? She says they were friends for a while, and Sandoval was always someone who was in her corner. He always rooted for her. And things got romantic after the girls' trip. He made her feel heard and seen, and she doesn't think she ever felt that way before, and definitely not with James. Andy said, how did you think this was going to play out with Ariana? Did you think there would be a path forward for the two of you? Raquel, yeah, I think I was living in my own reality. Andy now marvels at how many signs Ariana ignored. And he said, Tom thought that she didn't want to know that you guys were having an affair. And Raquel goes, yeah, it seemed that way. She never pressed about it. She never confronted me about it. According to Tom, she just believed at face value what he would tell her. Um, yeah. Since when is trusting somebody that you think you're going to spend the rest of your life with wrong? Or trusting a close friend, by the way. Since when is that wrong? And also, I really think it needs to be said, but sweetie, you're doing it right now. You do realize that, don't you? You're believing at face value everything Tom tells you. So then Andy goes, it sounds like you're blaming her. Raquel goes, at the time, that was my mindset. Oh, God, you are just coming off great. She does say that now I know that she really did want to know, and it was very deceitful. Okay. By the way, this is Andy's face the entire time she's talking. (laughs) 
Yes. Now he asks her about the night that Ariana found the FaceTime on Tom's phone and called her. What was that conversation like? How'd that go down? Raquel. She begged me to tell her when it all happened. And at this point, we were going to tell her, but we just wanted to get our stories straight. Yeah. She just said that. Mm Mm-hmm. Just came right out and said it. She goes on to say, because he felt like it would hurt her if she knew how long the affair had been going on. I'm sorry, this is you coaching her. This is exactly what Ariana was talking about. I mean, if anything, this is certainly vindicating Ariana. And he goes, so getting your story straight was that you were going to truncate how long the affair had been going on. But Ariana wanted specifics right there on the phone. And you told her the truth. And Raquel said, yeah, I did. And she thanked me because she said Tom would never have told me the truth. Are you hearing this, Raquel? Like, are you getting an idea of what the guy is like that you now are, you know, think you're going to have a life with or whatever. I don't know. Depending on what articles you read, I guess maybe they're already broken up. Who knows? But I would like to point out that it sounds like Ariana was right about that. He wasn't going to tell her the truth. And it also corroborates her story that Tom coaches. Now, they accuse each other of being the ones that didn't like share everything about their relationship. But all evidence here is pointing to Ariana was telling the truth, that Tom is the one who likes to control the narrative. Andy asks if he talked to her about the reunion or coached her. And she said, I mean, we did talk about the reunion, of course. And we talked about what might happen, what to expect, and how to approach things. So... I mean, basically coaching. Certainly not that I don't expect that they would talk about the reunion coming up. Of course they would. And even the coaching part. Look, they both did something wrong and they know they're going to get blasted for it. I don't even begrudge them wanting to like kind of talk it out and, okay, well, if they come at you with this, how are you going to respond? That kind of thing. But whether I understand it or not, it still doesn't look right for them. It still makes Ariana seem like she was right, that Tom Sandoval coaches people. And if he thought Ariana needed coaching, ooh, it's not that she won't do what he says. I'm just not sure she's capable of remembering everything. All right, so now it's like after another break and Andy's about to begin again. We see Sheena in her trailer a hundred yards away watching it on closed circuit TV. And Andy's like, okay, let's bring out Raquel. And before she gets out there, Sandoval like mumbles to Schwartz, green light, green light. Almost like a warning that, okay, the cameras are on. I don't know. I don't know anything about this, but Schwartz then decides to pull a bottle of Xanax out of his pocket and pop one in his mouth. Sandoval's like, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's a Xanax. And he's like, Jesus. (laughs) And other people see him. Ariana's like, are you taking E? Lisa Vanderpump is like, what is that? And Schwartz is like, no, it's a Xanax. And he goes, and you're taking it now, James? And you have a pill bottle on hand? So Sandoval leans over and whispers to Schwartz, you need to tell these people it's none of their business. It's your medication. So Schwartz is just like, yeah, I, it's for anxiety and I'm, I'm nervous right now. And then Raquel makes the long walk to the stage and she sits down on the end, not next to Sandoval. And that is where part two ended. Oh my God, you guys. I want to watch part three right now. It's so good. I'm so excited that I get to recap this for you guys. I hope you are liking these recaps. If you are, please give them a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That helps me greatly, helps my videos get seen to more people and helps me grow my channel. And if you click on the bell icon, you will be notified every time I post something new. Just a reminder that I'm taking a little break about three weeks or so and I'm not 
not exactly sure when I'm going to come back. So if you have clicked on the bell icon, that will let you know when I'm back in business. And again, leave suggestions of what you would like me to recap in the future. You can, you know, put your vote in for any reality show. It doesn't have to even be on Bravo. So um, I'm open to any suggestions. And I will definitely consider uh, anything that gets a lot of votes. And if you happen to be an Amazon shopper, I am an Amazon associate. That means if you go through one of my links down below, I will get a small credit for any of your qualifying purchases. And from now until June 18th, they are giving their associates bonus points. So it'll um, help me even more. <laughs> so please consider that as well. All right, you guys, I know you're as excited as I am. Reunion part three next week. I will be recapping it all. I love you guys. I'll see you then. Bye.